Good morning. My name is Kathy Uglo. I work at the Crawford County Conservation District in Meadville, Pennsylvania. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about black bears. And if you live in Pennsylvania, you may have seen some for yourself. And there he is. They're gorgeous creatures. Where do they live? Well, the American black bear is the most prevalent bear in North America. The range extends all the way from Alaska all the way down into Mexico and from California to Nova Scotia. So you can see where that red is located on the map. That's where you're going to find black bears. Now listen, not all black bears are black. Very strange. But while they're all the same species, they have different color variations and they're called phases. So they can be black or brown, cinnamon, tan, blonde, even white. According to the American Bear Association, the black phase is the most prevalent in the eastern regions, such as Pennsylvania, and in Canada. That's why when the European settlers came over, they named the species black bear. And there he is sitting there looking at us. Well, what is this? Is this a black bear? Yes, actually, in dry western regions, black bears are mostly brown or cinnamon colored because they live in a more rocky, sparsely vegetated landscape. So what are they doing? They're using camouflage, right? The American Bear Association clarifies only 1% of black bears in Pennsylvania are brown, 90% of black bears in Yosemite National Park are tan, light brown, or cinnamon. But white? Spirit bears are found on Gribble Island in British Columbia. They are the rarest color phase of all black bears. They have a white coat. It's caused by a recessive gene, and they are found in small, what they call pocket populations. That means they're kind of in little, little pockets together. While albino bears also exist throughout the black bears range, spirit bears are not albinos. Now what about their size? How big can they be? Are they big? Are they little like your teddy bear? Well, there's a couple standing right there. Black bears, when they're standing on all four feet, are only about three feet high, if you can imagine a yardstick. Well, then when they stand up, they can be five to seven feet. So they vary considerably in size, and it kind of can depend on the quality of food they're getting. Of course, if you're taking your vitamins, you're getting nice and strong, a little bigger. But the males in general are bigger too than the females. They are 20 to 60% larger. The adult male black bears can range from 50 to 75 inches in length, and they can weigh about 130 to 666 pounds. That's quite an animal. The females are smaller, 50 to 75 inches, and they weigh 90 to 175 pounds. Oh, look at him. The little cubs. They're born in January, and they only weigh 7 to 11 ounces. That's less than a pound. I would have thought they would be a bigger animal when they were born, but they're not. The female bears may give birth to one to six cubs at a time, but on average they have about three cubs per litter. The cubs are born blind, they can't see, they're covered with fine hair, and they nurse on mom's milk. They grow very quickly though, they can weigh about 80 pounds by the time they're one year old. Bears between the ages of one and two years old are called yearlings. And the young bears stay with their mom for about one and a half years, and then they strike off on their own to find what they call a home range, which would be their own area to live in. What could be the black bear benefit? What's good about having black bears? Well, they're very important in maintaining ecological systems in the forests. They disperse seeds across large distances, even more than birds. So that's a good way to propagate all kinds of vegetation. The bears break up logs while grubbing, which helps decomposition process and facilitates the return of nutrients from those logs to the soil. And what's grubbing? It's just what it sounds like, ripping apart those logs looking for insects. Bears open up forest canopies, allowing the sun to filter into the forest floor and this helps promote greater biological diversity. And just a side note, what kind of benefits to humans? 
Well, people really like to see bears and they're one of the most photographed and watched animals across the entire continent. So what's for dinner? What's that bear going to eat? Well, they're omnivores. So they eat a wide range of food depending on what's available. I kind of tuck that away and remember that. What's available? Usually their menu consists of insect, in particular like ants, nuts, berries, acorns, grasses, other vegetation. Black bears can be really efficient predators of deer fawns and moose calves. In some areas of coastal British Columbia and Alaska, they also like to feed on the spawning salmon. So what's he have in his mouth? It says, look what I found. It looks like a garbage bag. Does that look like a garbage bag? Oh yeah, it is. Why bears can lose their fear of humans. It's kind of like feeding pets, right? You feed your cat enough, she's going to come to you. Do you have bear troubles in your neighborhood? Do you often see them in the garbage can or maybe strolling around on your backyard or patio? Well, bird feeders and unsecured pet food, garbage grills, may bring them right to your back door. They have really excellent eyesight and hearing, and their sense of smell is seven times greater than a bloodhound's. So it's really important that you remember they can easily find pet food, garbage, barbecue grills, bird feeders. Once they locate that food source in your yard, they remember where it is. Bears are normally a little bit wary of people. They kind of hang back. They're not going to come rushing right up to you looking for you to pet them like your dog. But if a bear finds food without getting frightened away, it may come back for more. So each time that happens, the bear can become less fearful, and they call that habituation. It can kind of lead to problems if you don't want the bears hanging around. Things can happen during a period called hyperphagia. This is kind of a feeding frenzy. Late in the summer and fall, the bears are trying to really eat a lot and bulk up for hibernation, and they tend to gain three to four pounds, and they're eating a lot of calories per day. Sometimes bears lose their fear of people, and they're called nuisance bears. These are most often the young adult, young adult males. Young bears just left their mom. They're trying to strike out on their own, or maybe mother with young cubs. There's a thing called a child bear friendly live trap that you can trap the bear and whoosh it away somewhere else to live. And they do this in many states, hoping they won't come back. But just remember that it's easier to not leave things in your yard or your trash dumpster that's going to attract them. This is another setup called a catch net setup. Obviously the bear has to be up the tree and it can't be up too high or it's not gonna fall into that net. But it's a, a way to maybe tranquilize a bear and it falls gently into the net and you take it uh, to a new home. And this is only done by obviously game people. So what do you do if you meet a black bear? First of all, if you see a black bear in your yard, don't feel the worst. A young bear may just be looking around searching for a home of his own, or it might be an adult that's kind of smelling something really good and he's checking it out. Usually, if a bear sees you, they head for the hills, never to be seen again. Bear attacks are very rare compared to the number of close encounters. In most cases, a bear will detect you first and they'll leave the area long before you ever see the bear. But if you do meet a bear before it's had time to leave, here are some suggestions. Remember, every situation is different with respect to the bear, the terrain, the people, and what's going on, your activities. First of all, just stay calm. If you see a bear and it hasn't seen you, just calmly leave the area. While you're moving away, you might want to talk so that it can hear you and know that you're there. Get back. If you have a close encounter, back away slowly while facing the bear. Avoid direct eye contact because they might think that that's a threat to them. Give them plenty of room to escape. Wild bears rarely attack people unless they feel threatened or provoked. So if you're on a trail, step off the downhill side, slowly leave the area. Whatever you do though, don't climb or run. That's a bad idea. If a cub is nearby, try to move away from it. Be alert too, there could be other cubs. 
but never climb a tree to escape because the sows chase their cubs up trees when they detect danger. So if you climb a tree, a sow may interpret that as an attempt to get her cubs. So stay on the ground, don't run or make any sudden movements. Running may prompt them to chase you and you can't, un you can't outrun a bear. So pay attention, bears will use all of their senses to figure out what you are. If they recognize you as a person, they may stand upright or they may move closer in their efforts to detect odors in the air currents. But don't consider this a sign of aggression. Once a bear identifies you, it will usually leave the area. However, if the bear stays, it may do some things like pop its jaws, crack its teeth, stick out its lips, or huff or whoop, slap the ground with its paws. That's kind of a warning that you are too close and geez, you're making him nervous that's a sign for you to leave. So again, back away, slowly leave the area. If you ignore the jaw popping warning, some bears have been known to do what they call a bluff charge. A bluff means fake, he's bluffing you or tricking you. They'll charge up within a few feet. If this happens, wave your arms wildly and shout, make a lot of noise. Whatever you do, don't play dead. If you have bear spray, which is sold a lot for people that, that hike in areas with bears, um, it might be a good idea to get that ready. If by any chance the bear proceeds and you're starting to be attacked, which is extremely rare, fight back. Bears have been driven away when people have fought back with rocks or sticks, binoculars, even their bare hands. And that's when you want to be using your bear spray also. So let's change direction. Black bears have always been a part of folklore and mythology. They're kind of interesting creatures. Black bears feature predominant, prominently in the stories of some of America's indigenous people. One tale tells of how the black bear was a creation of the great spirit, while the grizzly was created by the evil spirit. The Navajo believed the black bear was chief among the bears of four directions surrounding the sun's house and would pray to it in order to be granted its protection during raids. Out in the Pacific Northwest, there are some tribes that live. Um, you can see up toward Canada there, there's a Pacific Ocean on the left. Uh, in the mythology of the Haida, Tinglet, and Shimshian people of the Northwest Coast, mankind first learned to respect bears when a girl married the son of a black bear chieftain. In other mythology, black and brown bears became enemies when grizzly bear woman killed black bear woman for being lazy. So black bear women's children turned and killed grizzly bears on cubs. Kind of gruesome little tale. But in culture, let's go to the later side, teddy bears. Everybody's got a teddy bear they like. They came into being in the United States when their creator, Morris Mictum, was inspired to make the toys after coming across this cartoon that you see on the right there. It was in the Washington Post in 1902, and it was Theodore Roosevelt refusing to shoot a black bear cub. What about Winnie the Pooh? That's a famous bear. Winnie the Pooh up there, getting his head stuck in his honey pot was a fictional char character that was named after Winnipeg, a female American black bear cub that lived in the London Zoo from 1915 until her death in 1934. And there she is, Winnipeg, down here in the right. She had been rescued by a Calvary veterinarian, Harry Colburn. The American black bear is the mascot of a few universities, University of Maine, for example, and at Baylor University, they have two live black bears on their campus. You can see a couple of Baylor, looks like students, maybe they're employees with one of the bears, and they have a big enclosure, much like you'd see in a zoo, and you can see the sign over here, it talks a little bit about the history of it. In 1917, they moved the first live mascot to campus. His name was Ted, but he was often called Bruin. In 1974, they decided that the mascots would be called Judge, following in honor of the university's namesake, Judge R.E.B. Baylor. And they've had several on-campus houses, but now they have a really big bear plaza. So if you get curious, you can check online and, and look at that yourself. It's really, really neat. 
what about this? Only you can prevent wildfires. In the spring of 1950, an American black bear cub was caught in the Capitan Gap fire in the Capitan Mountain Range, and that is in eastern New Mexico. And it was a huge 17,000 acre forest fire that was caused accidentally by humans. But the little bear, bear cub that was found was rescued and survived. And he ended up being the living representative of Smokey Bear, the mascot of the United States Forest Service. And that is a book there on the right that I have in my office called The True Story of Smokey Bear. So that's quite a lot to learn about bears today. Shh, they're hibernating. Thank you for joining me. If you're interested in anything uh, pertaining to bears that I've talked about today, there's my sources. And thank you so much for sharing with me.